Hi, this is Andre. And thanks for checking out Synthesipy. Synthesipy is scientifically integrating the wisdoms of history based on fact and truth into our present culture. Let's take a look today on chapter 18, Climate Change. The International Governmental Panel on Climate Change published its 1,435-page report titled Climate Change 2014, Mitigation of Climate Change. It was the Working Group 3 contribution to this fifth assessment report. This, re this report is based on science. 1,300 scientific experts performing and reviewing thousands of studies and reams of scientific data. Here's the conclusion of this report. Mitigation in the context of climate change is a human inter intervention to reduce the sources or enhance the sinks of greenhouse gases. Mitigation is necessary because working groups one and two of the Intergovernmental Plan on Climate Change have concluded that the consequences of unchecked climate change for humans and natural ecosystems are already apparent and increasing, and the dangers of irreversible damage are significant. While there are uncertainties, many scenarios lead to sub substantial climate impacts, including direct harm to human and ecological well-being that exceed the ability of those systems to adapt fully. The planet as we know it is threatened. The energy supply sector is the largest con contributor to global greenhouse gas emissions and therefore offers a multitude of options to reduce global greenhouse gas em emissions but the stabilization of greenhouse gas concentrations at low levels requires a fundamental transformation of the energy supply system, including the long-term phase-out of unabated fossil fuel conversion technologies and their substitution by low greenhouse gas alternatives. As renewable energy penetration increases, such issues are more challenging and must be carefully considered in energy supply planning and operations to ensure reliable energy supply and may result in higher costs. The International Panel on Climate Change issued a special report on global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius in October of 2018. The summary of which is, limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius would require rapid, far-reaching, and unprecedented challenges in all aspects of society with clear benefits to people and natural ecosystems, limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to two could go hand in hand with ensuring a more sustainable world. One of the key messages that comes out very strongly from this report is that we are already seeing the consequences of a one degree Celsius of global warming through more extreme weather, rising sea levels, and diminishing Arctic sea ice, among other changes. The decision we make today, the decisions we make today, are critical in ensuring a safe and sustainable world for everyone, both now and in the future, said Deborah Roberts, co-chair of IPCC Working Group 2. The next few years are probably the most important in our history, she said. It's a line in the sand. And what it says to our species is that this is the moment and we must act now. She continued, this is the largest clarion call from the science community and I hope it mobilizes people and dents the mood of complacency. Christina Figueres, the former UN climate chief who led the historic Paris Agreement of 2015 said, there is nothing opaque about this new data. The illustrations of mounting impacts, fast approaching and irreversible tipping points are visceral versions of a future that no policymaker could wish to usher in or be responsible for. The report finds that limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius would require rapid and far reaching transitions in land, energy, industry, buildings, transport, and cities. Global net human-caused emissions from carbon dioxide would need to fall by about 45% from 2010 levels by 2030, 
reaching net zero around 2050. This means that any remaining emissions would need to be balanced by removing CO2 from the air. Limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius is possible within the laws of chemistry and physics. But doing so would require unprecedented changes, said Jim Skia, co-chair of IPCC Working Group 3. Let's take a look at NASA and what NASA has to say about climate change. Climate change. How do we know? Well, based on all NASA data, the Earth's climate has changed throughout history. Just in the last 150,000 years, there have been five cycles of glacial advance and retreat. Advance, retreat, advance, retreat, advance, retreat, advance, retreat. With the, with the abrupt end of the last ice age about 7,000 years ago, making the time now the beginning of the modern climate era and of human civilization. Most of these climate changes are attributed to very small variations in the Earth's orbit that changed the amount of solar energy our planet receives. But not in the last 450,000 years has the CO2 level gone over 300 parts per million. In 1950 it broke 300 and is now over 400 parts per million. Hence it gets the name from the hockey stick. The evidence for rapid climate change is compelling. One example is global temperature rise. The planet's average surface temperature has risen about 2 degrees Fahrenheit, 1.1 degrees Celsius, since the late 19th century, a change largely driven by increased carbon dioxide, human-made emissions into the atmosphere. You can see temperature increase over the last 140 or so years. The temperature of oceans has increased. Another example of climate change. The oceans have absorbed much of this increased heat with the top 700 meters, about 2,300 feet of oceans showing warming of 0 0.302 degrees Fahrenheit since 1969. Note that's a tremendous amount of heat. Almost three quarters of the Earth is covered by oceans, and now all that surface has absorbed a tremendous amount of heat from the sun. 0 0.302 degrees might not seem like much, but multiply that by the surface of the Earth, and it's a lot. Another example, shrinking ice sheets, glacial retreat, and less snow cover. We can see a decrease in Arctic sea ice over time. The Greenland ice sheets and the Arctic sea ice and Antarctic ice sheets have decreased in mass, as seen in the diagram. Crystal Serenity was the first cruise ship in history to pass through the Northwest Passage in 2016. Starting in the North Atlantic, going through the archipelago, archipelago and uh, porting in north, north Ala northern Alaska. This was possible as a result of global warming and less Arctic sea ice. More data. Sea level rise. Global sea level rose about 8, eight inches in the last century. The rate in the last two decades of the last 20 years, however, is nearly double the rate of increase over the previous 80 years. And you can see that if you take a close look at the line. Another example, more data that, that we can see for climate change, extreme events. <laughs> 
the number of record high temperature events in the United States has been increasing, while the number of record low temperature events has been decreasing since 1950. The U.S. has also witnessed increasing numbers of intense rainfall events such as hurricanes, and an increase in drought, wildfires, and mudslides. In September of 2017, Hurricane Irma had sustained winds of 185 miles per hour for 37 hours, the longest that any hurricane around the world has maintained that intensity. Regarding Atlantic hurricanes, Irma had the second highest wind speed of any hurricane at 185 miles per hour, second only to Hurricane Allen at 190 miles per hour in 1980. Irma also had the second longest duration as a Category 5 hurricane at three days and three hours, second only to the Cuba hurricane in 1932, which lasted three days and six hours. Hurricane Harvey stalled over southeast Texas and dumped over 50 inches of rain, the most of any U.S. hurricane and third on the list of Atlantic hurricanes since 1900. This is the first time in history of record keeping that two Category 4 or higher hurricanes have struck the U.S. mainland in the same year. And these hit eight days apart. This is an example of an increase in storm intensity and extreme events. One more piece of evidence climate change, global warming, ocean acidification. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, the acidity of surface ocean waters has increased by about 30%. This increase is the result of humans emitting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and hence more being absorbed into the oceans, causing coral reefs to bleach and die, along with many other impacts on ocean life. So, what is NASA's conclusion based on science and the evidence just presented? That there is no question that increased levels of greenhouse gases cause the Earth to warm in response. Global warming and climate change is a result of increased CO2 levels in the atmosphere, which result in global temperature rise, warming oceans, shrinking ice sheets and glacial retreat, sea level rise, extreme weather events like hurricanes and droughts, and ocean acidification. As the International Panel on Climate Change, based on science, concludes, scientific evidence for warming of the climate system is unequivocal. As the evidence provided shows, global warming and climate change, the result of increased CO2 levels in the atmosphere, primarily from the burning of fossil fuels starting with the Industrial Revolution, is happening as we speak. It's real. Here's one more piece of evidence, <coughs> excuse me, of global warming. Uh, recall, you may recall a graph for human population over time. Let's compare that to atmospheric CO2 levels over the past million years. Over the past million years, the spike in world population, right here, coincides exactly with the spike in CO2 levels. The chances of that happening and being completely <coughs> unrelated are one in a million. Another way to say that is the chances that there is no correlation between carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and global warming, causing global warming. The odds of that being true are 999,999 out of a million. Hopefully, as a society, we will acknowledge climate change and try to mitigate its effects on the environment and society. Climate change is real. The only questions are, to what degree will it impact humanity, and what will we do about it? Recall that other form of cancer mentioned at the end of chapter 17? 
that started as particular companies, the cells in a particular industry in Oregon that has metastasized now involving all nations and it is affecting the entire earth, the host. Read more about this in chapter 19.